Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Wednesday, June the 14th, Flag Day, and a sad piece of news for the United States of America today. A Republican baseball team was uh, practicing early this morning in, in a Virginia suburb for a game against the Democrats when a man with a semi-automatic rifle opened fire on the people who were on the field. Uh, Steve Scalise, who's a member of the House Republican leadership, was wounded in the knee. A staff member was wounded. A Tyson Foods lobbyist was wounded. Two Capitol Police who accompanied Scalise because he is a member of the leadership also were wounded, but they killed the man who fired the shots. He's been identified as an Illinois man, 66 years old, somebody who had a record of domestic battery in his past and other run-ins with the police, still able to buy guns who uh, identified himself on his Facebook page as a devoted follower of Bernie Sanders and some liberal causes. Naturally, the politicization of this event has begun from all directions. Republicans say this is a sign of how we've become divided by people who are protesting Donald Trump, the people who think gun violence is a scourge on the country and something needs to be done or using the case as well. I think we could all agree that violence is not a good outcome regardless of who it's used against. You know, we, we always want to pick demons, but we forget pretty quickly it wasn't very long ago that Gabby Giffords, a Democratic congresswoman, was shot also in, a, in an unprovoked attack. So I think Paul Ryan actually said it best, when one is shot, we're all shot. We're all victims. We're all Republicans today, at least, in, in that moment. Elsewhere, back home in Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson is going to go off on what may be his sixth or seventh foreign trade mission, this one to France, Germany, and Israel, to work with manufacturers who are already doing business here and perhaps hope to line up some more. It'll cost $80,000. Several staff members will accompany him on the trip and also his wife. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge bragged on the internet last night that uh, she participated in a, in a successful effort in a lawsuit to stop an FCC rule that would have put a cap on the charges given to prisoners in, in both state and local jails for making phone calls, particularly on intrastate phone calls, that is, in the states in which the prisoners live. Those have been unregulated. The Obama administration tried to regulate them because some states and local governments try and confiscate huge amount of monies from prisoners to make phone calls. Well, Leslie Rutledge thought that was a terrible thing, and they wanted a D.C. Circuit Court. The Trump administration had already pulled back from this rule. It's a terrible burden on inmates' families. Leslie Rutledge said this uh, recovers costs for the state. That's not really true. It preserves a profit the state makes off the pain of families trying to communicate with people in prison. And by, by the way, some of these people in jails are not yet convicts, yet they're awaiting trial and so presumed innocent until that happens. We had our special elections yesterday in Arkansas. Pine Bluff voters overwhelmingly approved a sales tax for a variety of civic improvements. And the Pulaski County School District voted in favor of a $66 million bond issue to build a grand new high school in Sylvan Hills. Interesting vote in Pulaski County. It was defeated throughout the district except in the area around Sherwood. But Sherwood, which will get the new high school, turned out a much larger vote and it was enough to carry the day and by a wide margin. Special elections do work. The last two votes in the Pulaski County School District were held on regular election days and the voters overwhelmingly voted against taxes. This is why school people like special elections. This is why conservatives want school elections to be held on election day when the no voters are in, more in, in evidence. Big news at the federal courthouse just a few minutes ago after not quite two hours of deliberation, a federal court jury found that David Hudson, a retired Little Rock police officer, is not liable for any injuries suffered by Chris Irwin when Hudson arrested him in Furno's restaurant in 2011. There was a videotape of the arrest. Uh, Hudson uh, punched Irwin in the face a number of times. He was left bloody and bruised. Hudson said he only used the amount of force necessary. The jury apparently agreed with that. The verdict was unanimous. Our man Tom Cotton in the U.S. Senate got some more national exposure yesterday. This time it was for questioning when uh, Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, became, came before a Senate committee and, and mostly dodged questions about his involvement as a Trump campaigner with some of the Russian Russian people who have, have been tied to the Trump forces in various ways. Tom Cotton was praised by Jeff Sessions for his kind leading questions that allowed Jeff Sessions to knock questions that weren't particularly relevant out of the park, and that is for him to say that he was greatly offended that people would question his integrity. He didn't answer many questions, however. KRK and Arkansas Business both reported yesterday about an interesting case down in Saline County. That's of Bobby McAllister, a circuit court judge in, in Benton. 
Turns out that he spent a number of years not paying federal income taxes, has more than federal $100,000 in federal tax liens, took the Fifth Amendment in a divorce case uh, just last week when he was asked questions about his tax liability. The Judicial Discipline and Disciplinary Commission is reviewing those actions, no decision on that just yet. And finally, I've been ending each day uh, <clears throat> since the Donald Trump ascendancy. We're talking about resistance and, and uh, terrible things have happened in Washington today and, and people have raised questions about the legitimacy of questioning our people in leadership. I think the resistance should continue, but it should be said, if it wasn't already evident, that that means only by all legal means possible, so by speech, by assembly, by petition, and most of all by voting, but certainly not by violence, but continue being good American citizens because that's how we got here in the first place is by resisting rule that we thought was was out not in keeping with our best interest. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.